Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Cole and I are speaking with Stephen Kimmel, the Brain Whisperer. Hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you again, Steve. Thank hey, you. Um, as the Brain Whisperer, you have taught us that our brain believes everything we tell it. And uh, therefore, it can be our best friend or our worst enemy. Yeah. But does oh. that affect our feelings? Oh. Can I, if, oh. if I'm feeling down, can I say I feel great? And and will it will it help me feel better? Will it actually do that? Not not completely. It isn't quite that simple because feelings are different. Let me explain. Our brain thinks things through our neurons. It feels things mainly through our hormones. Our neurons are something that we can see. You can go to a microscope and look at our neurons. Our hormones are not something you can see. They're sort of more liquidy, so to speak. They're also sort of messy. In fact, they're not sort of messy, they are messy. <laughs> we oftentimes wake up in the morning and we say, why am I feeling this way? I shouldn't be feeling this way. I should be feeling that way. And we cannot say, well, I will feel this way and not feel that way. Our brain, our feelings don't work that way. So for most of the history of psychology, psychology felt that our feelings came first. And then our thoughts. And then in 1961, a little book was written called The Guide to Rational Living by Dr. Albert Ellis and Robert Harper. It's still in print. You can buy it through Amazon. What Dr. Ellis suggested, which has since been validated by decades of research all over the world, is that, hang on to your seats, our feelings come first. No, nope. switch that. Our beliefs comes first and then our feelings. We do not feel, our feelings did not come from how we were raised. Our feelings do not come from events in our lives. They come from what we say about how we were raised. They come from what we believe about events in our lives. Our beliefs come first, followed by the feelings. Now, when he suggested this, psychology had a conniption fit. They said, no, 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 you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Our feelings come first. And the um, example I like to give is 9-11. When 9-11 helped, it didn't, it didn't matter what we believed. As we saw the towers fall over television, our feelings came absolutely instantly. And that was true of the whole world. However, those feelings gradually changed in you and in me over time. Why? Because our beliefs changed. Our feelings primarily, not completely, not completely, but our feelings primarily come from what we believe. Let me illustrate. John, let's imagine that I show up at your house on a Saturday morning with a shovel. I say, hi, John. Hi, Steve. How are you? How's the kids? Good to see you. And then I say, I'm going to dig a hole in your backyard. And without asking you, I go to your backyard, take my shovel and dig a hole. And as you watch the dig the hole, you develop some beliefs. Beliefs such as Steve and I have been friends for years. Our children have played together. Steve is a good friend. He knows it's my birthday today. He also knows that I love rose bushes. <gasps> That's what he's doing. He's digging the hole in my backyard to plant a rose bush for my birthday. Steve, you're something else. Thank you so much. That's one scenario. But another scenario is that I've hated you all my life. And finally, I show up on your front door with a shovel on a Saturday morning. And I say, hi, John, I'm digging a hole in your backyard. 
Uh, without asking, I go to your backyard, I start digging the hole. And this time, John, your beliefs are completely different. Your belief is that I'm digging the hole to bury you in it. Now watch this. Same John, same Steve, same shovel, same Saturday morning, same front porch, same back porch, same hole, completely different beliefs, completely different feelings. When I learned that years and years ago, I cannot tell you how excited I got about that. Because my feelings about myself were very, very negative. In fact, according to Sham Helmstetter's book, What You Say When You Talk to Yourself, printed back in the 1980s, most of the things that we say to ourselves about ourselves are negative. And along with those negative thoughts, Come negative feelings. Why is that so exciting? Because we now know that we can replace those negative thoughts. In other words, we can replace those negative beliefs. Is it easy? Of course it isn't. Because some of the negative beliefs we have had about ourselves, we have had our entire lives. But when we are aware of the negative things we are saying to ourselves, we can say, wait a minute, stop. I'm the boss here. I determine what I'm thinking. And I'm just not going to think that anymore about myself. And here's what's exciting. You keep doing that. You keep replacing those negative thoughts, those negative beliefs. And that becomes, over time, a mindset. And then over more time, that becomes the way you think. And even more exciting than that, that becomes who you are. So the person that I have been for the first half of my life is completely different from the person that I am now. How do I know? Ask my wife. She's seen the transformation. So let's take this a step further. 1918, I'm sorry, 2018 was a rather challenging year for me. In the first part of the year, I discovered I had cancer, and then cataracts, and then diabetes. And then at the end of the year, I discovered I had advanced heart disease. My mitral valve was whipping all over the place. Well, for the cancer, they took a large part of my scalp off and I'm cancer free. For the cataracts, they replaced the lenses, and now I no longer need these glasses. For the, um, uh, let's see, what well, for the diabetes, I had to completely switch my lifestyle and I've lost 30 pounds. And for the heart disease, I had open heart surgery last year and my heart is as good as ever. But the point I want to make is this, when I discovered that I had cancer and cataracts, that's not where the feelings came from. They came from what I was saying about the cancer and the cataracts. That's why, Art and John, you met people who have been raised in situations that were horrendous. And yet the things that they have done with their lives is amazing. You've also met people who've been raised in situations to die for. And quite frankly, some wish they could. What's the difference? It's not what happened to us. It's what we believe happened to us. And people often say to me, I'm not really sure what I believe. And I give them a wonderful handle. There's a wonderful handle. And that is, listen to yourself talk. 
if you want to know what you're believing, listen to what you're saying. And then when it gets negative, you say, wait a minute. I'm just not going to say that anymore. And you know what your brain says? Oh, okay. I believe you. Because I believe everything you tell me. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Steve. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.